Welcome back to Subway's I.O. Today's topic is the R211T, and specifically the questions we get most often about open gangway cars and their future in New York. Open gangways feel new, but they're not. The BMT introduced New York's first open gangway subway cars over a century ago. In 1923, the BMT's C-type conversion units featured open gangways, followed by later classes, including the D-types and several experimental units designed to operate both in the subway and on the older elevated lines. Many of these cars were not only open gangway, but articulated as well. That era effectively came to an end in 1965, marking the disappearance of open gangways from New York's subway system for more than 50 years. The R211T marks their return, this time in a modern context. But while the concept looks familiar, almost everything around it has changed. One of the biggest questions we hear is, why doesn't the MTA order more open gangway cars, and why can't they run everywhere? The short answer is safety regulation, more specifically, NFPA 130, the National Fire Protection Association standard governing fire safety and fixed guideway transit systems. Beginning in the late 1970s, rapid transit systems saw a major shift toward formalized fire life safety regulation. NFPA 130 sets requirements related to fire, smoke, evacuation, and materials, both inside subway cars and within the tunnel environment itself. One concept in particular quietly drives nearly every decision around open gangways, tenability. Under NFPA 130, tenability is defined as the condition under which people can remain alive and functional long enough to self-evacuate during an emergency. This is where open gangways become complicated. In a fire scenario, open gangways allow longitudinal spread of smoke and heat across multiple cars. While this improves passenger circulation during normal operations, it can rapidly reduce visibility, breathable air, and safe refuge space during an emergency. New car designs are evaluated using A-set and R-set modeling. A set or available safe egress time, R-set or required safe egress time, which includes detection, reaction, movement, and, and bottleneck delays. These tests don't just look at the car in isolation. They're evaluated in combination with tunnel geometry, ventilation capacity, walkway availability, and emergency egress spacing. Older and narrower tunnels typically have lower air volume, slower smoke exhaust effectiveness, limited or inconsistent bench wall and walkway access, longer distances between emergency exits. All of these factors reduce tenability and increase passenger exposure time during a fire. This is why the R211T can operate on certain lines or segments, but not others. Lines with closer station spacing, stronger ventilation, wider tunnels, continuous walkways, and favorable A-set and R-set results can support open gangway operation, while other sections cannot. This is also why you may see R211Ts operating on parts of the Fulton line, for example, while certain express sections remain off-limits. By contrast, the R211A, the conventional, non-gangway version, offers greater flexibility. The physical separation between cars significantly slows smoke and fire spread, extending A-set and improving tenability. As a result, conventional cars can operate system-wide without the same restrictions. Why Toronto and London and not New York? Toronto and London are able to operate open gangway trains safely not by relaxing fire safety standards, but by designing their systems around different assumptions. Both networks feature much shorter station spacing than New York's express segments, which reduces the time passengers would spend in a smoke-filled tunnel and increases the likelihood that a train can reach a station during an incident. Their tunnels and ventilation systems were designed to actively manage smoke, relying on strong piston effects, closely spaced ventilation, and exhaust to control smoke movement rather than depending on compartmentalization within individual cars. Fire safety rules in both cities are largely performance-based, emphasizing evacuation time, detection speed, and smoke extraction effectiveness instead of strict car-by-car -car containment. Because NYC assumes worst-case scenarios, extended stops between stations and delayed evacuation the R211's open gangway version, R211T, is restricted to routes where tenability modeling works 
without major infrastructure upgrades. So, does this mean open gangways can't work in New York? Not at all. The R211T is a prototype, and prototypes exist to generate data and inform future design. One of the key challenges going forward is controlling smoke and fire movement during an emergency. Potential future mitigations could include systems that restrict longitudinal airflow during a fire, better control of piston effect pressure paths, water mist suppression systems you used in combination with smoke ventilation to increase ASET, upgraded tunnel walkways and bench walls, and modernized tunnel ventilation systems. Over time, these changes could expand where open gangway trains are viable. So, if open gangway adoption in New York feels slow, it's important to remember the reality of the system, its age, its varied construction standards, and the safety requirements that govern modern rolling stock. Open gangways aren't compatible everywhere, not yet. But the R211T is an important step toward understanding how they might be in the future. I'm Michael with Subways.io, signing off. Until next time.